Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is today in Madrid for a high-level meeting on food security and regrets that he is, un he is unable to be with us today. <coughs> we are, however, very honored that Asha Rose Migiro, the Deputy Secretary General, is here to deliver his special message for this day. So, Deputy Secretary General, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I'm honored to read the statement of the Secretary General. Today, we remember the millions of victims of the Nazis. Nearly one third of the Jewish people and countless other minorities who suffered atrocious acts of discrimination, deprivation, cruelty, and murder. New initiatives in Holocaust remembrance and education have given us an authentic basis for hope. That hope is the theme of this year's observance. But we can and must do more if we are to make that hope a reality. We must continue to examine why the world failed to prevent the Holocaust and other atrocities since. That way, we will be better armed to defeat anti-Semitism and other forms of intolerance. We must continue to teach our children the lessons of history's darkest chapters. That will help them do a better job than their elders in building a world of peaceful coexistence. We must combat Holocaust denial and speak out in the face of bigotry and hatred. And we must uphold the standards and laws that the United Nations has put in place to protect people and fight impunity for genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Our world continues to be plagued by ruthless violence, utter disregard for human rights, and the targeting of people solely for who they are. On this fourth International Day of Commemoration, let us remember the victims of the Holocaust by reaffirming our faith in the dignity and equal rights of all members of the human family. And let us pledge to work together to turn today's hope into tomorrow's better future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Deputy Secretary General, for that important message from the Secretary General. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor to introduce His Excellency, Mr. Joseph Nusengimana, Permanent Representative of Rwanda, Vice President of the 63rd Session of the General Assembly, to deliver the message of the President of the General Assembly. Your Excellency, please. As uh, Vice President of the General Assembly and uh, a Permanent Representative of Rwanda, I am honored to read the message of uh, His Excellency Father Miguel Descoto uh, Brockman, President of the General Assembly. Excellencies, Madam Deputy Secretary General, special guests, sisters, and brothers all, I warmly welcome all of you to the United Nations, where in 2005, the General Assembly adopted its resolution on Holocaust remembrance that brings us together today. The theme of our solemn commemoration today, remembrance and education, highlights both our personal and shared rec uh, recollection of the victims and our work to prevent all acts of genocide today and in the future. We are honored to have very special guests with us today to provide testimony as victim and eyewitnesses. We remember that the term genocide was coined by the Polish Jew, uh, Raphael Remkin, as the world struggled to find the words to capture the scope of the crimes that were coming to light. 
but as our direct links to the Nazi Holocaust fire, we must step, uh, step up our efforts to educate new generations as to the contemporary relevance of the horrendous experience and give meaning to, cry of, to the cry of never again. To accomplish these goals, we need to move beyond our statements of grief and memory, however powerfully felt, and work to develop new ways of thinking about the Holocaust, about genocide, about the apparently bot bottomless capacity for people's cruelty to each other. That capacity is shelled by all of us. At the core, our genocides, our holocaust, starts with the alienation, demonization, and the marginalization of the other. The citizen of another religion, other race, ethnicity, another set of political ideas, or another sexual orientation than our own. The Nazi perpetrate Holocaust took place in what was perceived to be one of the most sophisticated societies of Eve. It was not simply a horrific set of murderous events. It began with policies and campaigns that reflected a way of thinking about others. It was a propaganda campaign that aimed to convince ordinary Germans, Poles, and so many other than the problems were a, consequences, a consequence of the presence of uh, the others in their countries, Roma, communists, gays, and lesbian, and most of all Jews. It is logically led inexorably to the norm that the others could be vilified, dispossessed, walled into crowded ghettos, arrested, tortured, and ultimately killed with absolute impunity. If you are serious about never again, and serious about preventing all the genocide and any future Holocaust, we must educate our youth about the values that virtually every religious and ethical tradition share in common, the fact that we are all brothers and sisters and must demand respect for the others who live among us. We must indeed go beyond remembrance to embrace a struggle against intolerance and for a relationship that replace us and them with we and ours. We celebrate with uh, the people of the United States the great milestone, the long-standing struggle against racism. The election of an African-American president represents a collective determination to overcome the deeply ingrained fears and contempt for the other that are at the roots of racism. Let us build on this inspiring example and press for such uh, breakthroughs in the other societies wrecked by animosity and hatred and the demonization of others, whether in poverty ravaged nations or uh, privileged educated so societies that acquiesce the crimes against humanity. Dear brothers and sisters, let us reflect on these possibilities. 
Let us go beyond remembrance and work together for more victories over racism, ethnic and religious intolerance, and anti-Semitism. This work begins with us in our families, our communities, and the national and the global and at the national and, and the global levels. Let us remember and learn about the crimes of the past in order to prevent them today and in the future. Thank you.